Was it true that you saw hell? Oh, yes, uh, absolutely. I saw the real hell. I was there. And I wouldn't wish that upon my worst enemy. I went down, literally into the center of the earth. And the things that I saw were literally undescribable and just brings me, makes me emotional every time I talk about it. But I lifted up out of hell and I came back on the earth and God began to speak to me. I actually saw the real Jesus. I saw him and he began to speak to me and he said that you have been secretly upset with the people that hurt you. You have been hoping that I would punish the people that hurt you. He said, these are not your people. These are my people. He says, I only want you to focus on the assignment that I'm giving you because I want to do something through you that the world hasn't seen. Welcome to the Father Stage. I am Jesse Lee Peterson. Thank you so much for being with me. Uh, the Father Stage is now on Locals, Locals.com. So click the link in the description to support our work. And remember, you can support the Father Stage by joining our channel membership on YouTube. All right. And thank you all in advance. So it's going to be an interesting discussion I have with me, Pastor Gerald. Johnson. He is the founder and senior pastor of Faith Cultural Church. Pastor Johnson, thank you again for coming on. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. It's a pleasure. Yes, sir. How long have you been a pastor? Senior pastor for uh, 11 years now. And in, in, um, in August, it'll be 12 years. Amazing. And so when you call by God or did you have to go to school to be a pastor? Well, I was called by God first. I went to school to be a pastor, but I was called by God first in, in 1993. And why did you have to go to school if you were called by God? Well, I, I believe that to rightly divide the text, the scripture, it's good to get some education alongside with revelation. If I if I didn't uh, go to school, I still would have, would have uh, you know, spoke the word and, and, and been the man of God that I'm uh, trying to be today. But education tends to, because it's of the intellect, and as you know, the intellect is of the devil, it tends to stop, prevent people from getting wisdom from the knowledge because people tend to hold on to the knowledge rather than letting it go. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I would say that's where discernment comes in at. Um, as they would say, um, some of the old folks used to say, eat the meat and spit the bones out. And there's definitely some things in school that you'll pick up that are, that's not uh, revelation from the Lord. Right. Had you not gone to school and, if, and and God called you to do this work for him, wouldn't he have taught you as you were doing the work? Okay, ask me that one more time. Had you not gone to school to be a pastor, right? And, mm -hmm. and if God called you, wouldn't he have taught you Along the way, you didn't need someone else to teach you? Absolutely. Yes, he would. Yeah, the, whole, so, the Holy Spirit, as the scripture says, he says, he'll teach you all things. So why didn't you trust that? You went to school and let someone else teach you? I, I would say that it was it, basically the way that I was, you know, trained. When I when I gave my heart to God, I, I did go to a church. I came straight from the streets and I went to church. And then uh, in what we call church, uh, they admonished for us to do that. So... You know, uh, I think I was following leadership. Oh, okay. Um, my show is called The Fallen State. Do you believe that human beings are in a fallen state? Absolutely. And what is the fallen state and how did it happen? Uh, it's a depravity. Um, it's an absence from closeness with God that happened in the Garden of Eden with uh, with Adam and Eve. Oh, okay. Uh, so, um do you agree with me that um, the God above is the man's God and the God below is the woman's God? Uh, no, I don't agree with that. Why not? Uh, when you say the God above is the man's God, are you speaking of what we would traditionally call the, 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 the one true God, what monotheistic religions believe in? Well, and then yeah. my other thing is when you say... The God below, are you talking about the God in the earth or the God in hell? Or? Satan. 
Satan is the woman's God, and God above that created all things is man's God. Okay. No, I I I don't believe that. I believe that um that uh the one true living God is a God of all that has breath. And so uh you do agree or do you agree that when Eve listened to the devil, that the devil became the woman's God, right? I believe that she when she listened to the devil, she became deceived by the devil, but I don't think that that may uh him, her God. Well, when she would deceive, it was because she believed in him. She believed what he said, right? Correct. And once you believe what they say, once she believed what he said, he became her God because she would no longer obey her husband who obeyed his father. So the, the saint did become the woman's God once she believed what he said, right? Okay, that's, I mean, that's a good observation on your end. I I don't see it that way. Why not? Because, um, well, if you if, if I believe anything that anyone says to me that's made in the image of God, then that would make based off your uh, uh, thought pattern that that would make them God to me. You know, well, I don't, I don't, well the I, woman I, the woman is the man's God because when the man listened to the woman, when Adam listened to Eve, the woman became the man's God, and the God below became the woman's God, and that's what that's why Adam had to leave too because he believed the woman. Okay. Okay. All right. Is that true? All right, I see. I, I don't see it like that. Why I see not? That, oh, I see that based off of text, you know, based off the Bible, I see that Adam uh, was in partnership and in fellowship with God and given an assignment by God to dress and keep the garden. He was told not to eat of the, eat of the truth. Don't touch it. Don't eat it. Don't even look at it. He told this to his wife. His wife disobeyed him right. somehow, some way. I don't he know. He listened to the devil. Did. She listened to the devil. Yeah, right. And so the, the man listened to the woman. Then God said to Adam, well, because you listen to the woman, you're going to suffer. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. <clears throat> yeah. And so the woman became the man's God. Okay. I got, I, I got your, I got your understanding of it. And do you agree with that? No. Why not? Where, where did you base? Uh, my question would be, where did that come from? Is that just your, is that your, intellect uh or your you know where, where did that come from it came from the adam and eve story remember okay. when at first eve listened to her husband and then she went shopping and she listened to the devil and then adam was like what no eve i told you not to and then adam finally listened to eve and that's when everything fell apart isn't that true that's that's what that's exactly true and mm-hmm. so isn't it true today until man is born again of the father that the woman is his god that the woman is his guy. Yes. I, no, I, I can't say it like that. I will say this, that a man in his fallen state, Satan is his God. No, the woman is his God. Satan is the woman's God. Okay. All right. All right. Why do you think men are so afraid of women? If the woman is not uh, their God, why are they afraid of women? I, you know, from, from where I come from, I don't see that men are afraid of women. I see that men tolerate uh, things that, agendas that have been placed in the earth nowadays, but not a real man, a biblical man is not afraid of woman. You're not afraid of your wife? <laughs> I love her, but I'm not afraid of her, no. Does she obey you? She actually she actually does. And so didn't I read that your wife is a preacher or something? Yeah, she's a pastor as well. Why did you let her be a pastor? Because that meant that she's in a leadership role and you know that it's not in the nature of a woman to lead. Women were created to follow and not to lead. So why did you let her become a preacher? She, she's not a senior pastor, but she is a preacher. Um, I see biblical, I see women in leadership all throughout the Bible, not in leadership over the man, but I see them all throughout the Bible. I could, you know, I could definitely name some of them if you would like. But what does that have to do uh, with your no. wife? Your wife is not of the Bible. Why did you let her become a preacher? No, you said that in the Bible it says that women can't be in leadership, and then you said I said women not were not Bible. created to lead; they were created to follow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Have you absolutely. noticed that every so, time the woman is left alone, she go nuts? She create bad things in her. She's so mentally and emotionally out of control that she needs the man mm-hmm. to lead her. Okay. Okay. Is that so true? What if? Uh, I, I will say that a woman 
definitely needs benefits from the man leading her. Right. So but you would have to, because it's not in her to lead, it's in her to follow. Mm-hmm. Okay. I, I, I will say this. You would have to ask God, why would he allow Deborah, the prophetess, to lead an entire nation or, or Miriam to lead an entire nation? I think that the problem with women in leadership is when there is the absence of men. But so those women that you're talking about, they had men guiding them. They were not doing that on their own. So does my wife. But why would you let her be a preacher? Because I'm guiding her. But what would happen when she came to you and said, oh, the Lord called me, and the Lord want me to be a preacher. What would have happened if you told her, go sit down, woman, God ain't calling you. She would, I, I promise you, she would <laughs> sit down. <laughs> she, she's, in, she's in submission to her husband. What's important to you? Okay. Uh, in life in general? or Right. What's important to you, yes? For me, myself, the most important thing to me is that souls come out of the kingdom of darkness and come into the kingdom of light, which is, which is God's kingdom, the kingdom of heaven. Uh, I think there's no, nothing in my life means more to me than to see that happen. And also, I guess even above that, not I guess, but above that, that I am pleasing to God and that I'm doing the right thing by him. What, um, I, I, um, I noticed that in your in your title of your ministry, you have the word culture, faith culture. Why yeah. culture? Uh, the idea is that it comes from the book of Revelation where it deals with, when you look at the picture of heaven, it says, he saw out of every nation, every tongue, and every kindred, people worshiping at once. And that's what the theme of it is behind. Faith, the structure of belief of all cultures coming together to worship the one God. But you, you, I get, you do agree, though, that God wants us to overcome culture. We should only love him and not identify with anything else or anyone else but him, right? I agree the kingdom should be over culture, absolutely. Yeah. And do, do the people understand that? Oh, absolutely. I mean, the ones that I get a chance to serve, yeah. Right on. Did you? I, I actually have a message called Kingdom Over Culture. Oh, you do? Mm-hmm. And, and the primary message in that is what? The point in that is what? Basically, basically, we can't be fooled by the agenda of culture. Whatever whatever agendas culture put out, whether it's civil thing, whether it's political thing, whether yeah. whatever culture puts up, we have to value kingdom above that. And so what's wrong with the blacks? They are so into their culture and they hate white people, blame them so much and begging and whining and violent, and committed crime, why don't they understand that it's about the spirit and not about the color? What's wrong with the blacks? I think we as blacks, we can't understand unless we we're born again. When you're born one thing, okay, you come up with a certain idea about how life should work. But when you're born again, then your whole perspective changed. I was once that person who blamed the white man for everything, yeah. who, who thought somebody's holding me back, you know, uh, but when I became born again, I said it's impossible for me to be a victor and a victim at the same time. That's right. Why did you think that in the beginning that wife was holding you back? What made you think that? My parents told me that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Amazing. I understand what you're saying. A lot of black parents are telling their children that. Mm-hmm. And these yeah. parents are yeah. calling themselves Christian, too, and yet they're teaching that to their children. Yeah, yeah. That, that's a, that's a person that hasn't been truly born again, or if they say, oh, you know, uh, Christianity is the white man's god. Well, that's a person, you know, literally, uh, not to get too theological, but Jews had it first, then Ethiopians had it, then Italians, you know. So actually, people of a darker complected uh, pigmentation had it before that. So that's just uh, upbringing. And what do they say when you try to tell them the truth about that situation? Do they accept it or they they reject you with that truth? Uh, it just depends on which crowd I'm speaking with. You know, some crowd, the younger crowd, who 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 they remove generations from what we would consider the, like the meat of the civil rights struggle, they'll get with the whole idea that you're not a victim. You know, nobody's above you. It's about who who God says you are and who you think you are. Yeah. But the older people, they'll give they'll give me a hard time. That's amazing, huh? Oh yeah, oh yeah. I know. A, I know a city full of 
I know there's a place, I don't want to give it, give it away too much, but there's one ministry that I know full of doctors and lawyers and principals, all African-American, but completely uh, racist and prejudiced against white people because they feel that white people are holding them back and they got doctor's degrees and, you know. So. I know. I, I've noticed that the more degrees that people get, the dumber they become. Mm-hmm. Have you, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Have you yeah. noticed that? I, I was I, sometimes, yeah. <laughs> and and have you spoken? I, I don't know if you know this preacher personally. Have you spoken to him about that? Uh, I, I have a lot of respect for him, and I don't feel that he would change. So I didn't say anything. And but why not love him enough to at least tell him the truth? But if he doesn't accept it, that's on him. You know what? I feel that he's. I, I feel that. Um, Maybe I should. I'll just give you that. I probably should just love him enough. Maybe that's a lack of love on my part uh, to say something. But my my brain was saying that this man's not going to change. He's stuck in the way he is, and you know he's not going to show racism to white people. But behind the door, behind the uh, closed doors, he'll, he'll mention it. Amazing, huh? Well, uh, I, oh, yeah. I and and so that's what the devil does. He try to talk you out of helping people because you see what's going on. You have love for all all people it sound. You should tell him the truth, and if he doesn't accept it, you, it's not personal. It's not like you're going to get mad at him or try to force him. At least somebody told him the truth about it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, and I got he, you. He I got might you. think about it later, and he might like, you know what? Pastor Johnson was right about that. I'm wrong, you know, because somebody told him the truth without judging him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, that's amazing. Love, that's real love. Yeah, it is. That's amazing. Um, do you believe racism exists? I do. I believe racism exists. I sure do. And, and why do you believe that? Um, uh, I'll say this: it has happened to me. I'm not. A, I'm nobody's victim, but I've experienced it. Uh, you know. So, so if you if you if you define racism as uh, one social group placing themselves above another social group in their minds. I, I believe it does. I can take experiences if you want me to. And so can you give me one experience? One, one, um, I'll give you one on the, on the business end of things. I believe, no, I'll give you one practical that I know. One day, I, one, one day midnight when CVS was open 24 hours, I went to CVS in, in, a, in a city called uh, Round Rock, Texas to get probably some allergy medicine. I forgot what it was for my family. On the way out, there was a there was a blue and white truck with a Confederate flag that sped to the front of the door as I was coming out. They said to me, they called me the, the N-word. I don't know if I'm allowed to say it on here. They said N-word as loud as they could, two Confederate flags, and then they sped off. And um, before I was regenerated, I would have tried to chase them down, mad, I would have tried to, figure out something to do to hurt them, but I felt sorry for them because I believe I believe that they too have been deceived by their parents who were deceived by by Satan. And so was that hatred or racism? Um I, I would say both of them. But why would you say both? Because raci- racism is fueled by hate. But does God call our battle racist or he said it's a battle between good and evil? We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but spirits and principality and wickedness. He called it evil. It's either good or it's evil. Why would you put another title over it rather than exposing the evil of it in hope that they may see what they're doing? Because there's kinds of evil. Like uh, Jesus made a statement one time. Jesus said, uh, it's not what goes into a man that defiles a man, but it's what comes out of a man. And he said, he starts naming these things and he says, it's all kinds of evil. So I, I believe that evil, evil in and of itself is the thing, but there's kinds of evil as well. That's why I termed it racism. But he never called it racist, though. He said it's evil. He, he, it was of the devil, and he kept it so that people can see and understand. But the world put the titles on it, and they call it something that it's not. Because as long as you okay. think that it's racism, you're not, you're not going to see that it's the devil at work. Mm. Okay, I can see that. See that. That makes sense. That makes sense. That makes sense. You know, I, I, I would need, I'm gonna look at it a little bit more 
to really see if I change that up because again, I'm thinking like it's a kind of evil, you know. But at the same time, if you label it as that, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Where it gives people view. Yes, because a lot of black people believe that is racism when it's just evil. It's anger. It's evil. And but if they saw it as it really is, then they wouldn't probably wouldn't be so mad at the person because they realize that people can't help themselves. They're controlled by the devil. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask, did you was the civil rights movement the worst thing that ever happened to blacks? No. Why not? I don't think so. I think there's far more worse things that happened to blacks uh, beginning from when we when we were in Africa, when we sold each other into slavery. I believe that even now what's happening now, uh, how the death rate amongst young adults now, the fatherless generation among young adults right now is far worse. Like it's far worse to eat at yourself than to have somebody else do it. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Before the civil rights movement, black people were doing very well they didn't have black leaders. They only trusted in God. They had families. They had fathers and mothers and grandparents. They bought land. They knew that our battle was spiritual, and they treated their neighbors as they would themselves, no matter what the color was. But then the civil rights movement came along, and they deceived the blacks to make them think that racism exists. They couldn't make it. And then they sold the blacks over to the Democratic Party, so that they can become the leaders of the Democrats, I mean, of the blacks, Martin Luther King and Jesse Jackson, all those crappy people. They became uh, the leader of the blacks. They destroyed the family with the welfare stuff. And it's just been downhill for the blacks ever since then. Isn't that worse than physical slavery? Do you see Martin Luther King as a crappy person? I see that he was a communist and he misled the people for his own personal gain. Okay. Okay. Because he sold, he signed the bill to for the, the government and all that stuff. If he meant the people well, he would not have done that. Okay. What do you okay. think about that? So I can't I can't see him as a crabby person. I, I think he I do believe that uh his his policies and the things that he felt that he did for African American people. Or black people, uh, he was moving from conviction. I think that you know, but I'm, I wasn't in that man's heart. I don't know. I've been taken wrong before. Right. I don't know. And do you see that the blacks have only got worse since the civil rights movement and not better? Um, and not all, not all, not all, but most. Say say it again now. I, I say not all, not all, not all, but most of the blacks have gotten worse since the civil rights movement instead of better. And they were doing much better prior to the civil rights movement. I, I was born and raised in Detroit, Michigan. And in Detroit, Michigan, where they had black bottom, all kinds of African-American businesses, yeah. all kinds of things. Right now, that's a ghost town. Yeah. And um, yeah. So do you see that the civil rights movement screwed them up? Um, I have to look into it to see if that's actually what it is. Um, is it? I, I'm sorry? When I initially look at it, I look at it as a drug epidemic and I look at it as a fatherless generation. So I have to look and see, did the civil rights movement actually do this? Yeah. And the Democratic Party actually. Well, check out Uncle Tom 1 and 2. Have you seen Uncle Tom, the movie? No. Documentary no. Uncle Tom. Check that out. It lays it out clear. You couldn't miss it. Okay. Yeah. Do you have anger? Do I have anger? Yes. No, not at all. So you never get angry? I don't have, I get angry sometimes, but I don't have anger. When you say that, that makes me think of like taking ownership of it. But if you don't have it, how can you get it? Uh, picking it up from an offense. But is this out of you? Is this out of you, right? Uh, yeah, out of me? The anger is inside of you, right? Right, it, it comes inside of me for a minute. Yeah, it, does, it doesn't live in me, it comes inside of me. No, it comes from where? Uh, like, like, here's what the, like the Bible says, be angry and sin not, right? Which means that you can have the propensity to get angry. It's, it's in the Bible. So if I, if I allow myself to operate at my lower state, 
or or operated at the fallen state, then I'll start thinking that someone did me wrong and an anger will get into me at first. And then I'll have to just translate that to what kingdom wants me, how kingdom wants me to respond. But it doesn't get in you. It's just that situation that brought that situation brought it, it up in you. It was already there, but the situation brought it up, right? Okay. All right. I could look at it like that. I, yeah, I could look at it like that. It's anger. But that, I, I, I believe that there are de- there are real demons that exist. Right. And I think that demons, they, I know that they influence people. So, like for instance, road rage. You could be driving down the street, and a demonic spirit will will will, will have an agenda against you, and have you get offended over something, and it comes in you. So this is I don't to say that it lives in me. I just can't, you know. And and it is hard to get me angry. Um, how did you become an angry person? Because when you were a kid, you were angry, and you grew up with that anger. Where did that come from? I, I'm not an angry person, but when it comes, <laughs> I, I, when it comes, because your question was, how did you become an angry person? I'm not an angry person, but when it does come, it's it's probably something that I felt that a, it's usually with people. So I felt that a person should have known better. I'm expecting other people what they don't really have to give me, and then I end up getting angry. You um. Uh, did you know that any man that has anger is a woman because anger is the nature of the woman? Okay. All right. <laughs> now, I didn't know that. <laughs> and, and men who have anger and got it from their mother, she passed it on to them when they were kids because the mother imposed herself upon the children. She made them, she turned them away from the father toward her. The kids become angry. And so they become subject to the mother and that's what made the woman their God. And because every woman you get involved with is your mama. And because you never forgave your mama, it's hard to deal with the woman you're married to because it's the same spirit. That's why in order to be born of the spirit of the father, you got to forgive the spirit of the woman, which is of the devil. Mm, okay. I teach that a little different. You know, um, when I teach men, I teach them that men who are hurt by their fathers react in two different ways anger or fantasy. So I, I teach that anger comes from the, the absence of the male. No, emotionally. it comes from the mother and the father, even if he's in the home, if he doesn't protect the children from the mother, she will still screw them up. Okay. How would you explain when when children are raised primarily by their dads and never knew their mom, but, but end up angry? Because the father has the spirit of his mother. And so he doesn't deal with the children with perfect love, patience, and all that. He deals with the children the way a woman would deal with. He became like his mother because you become like what you hate. Mm, okay, all right. Isn't that amazing? Now, as a, as, no, it's for, from you, from, I, I'm hearing what you're saying. <laughs> I'm hearing what you're saying. Have you forgiven your mother for imposing her will on you? Um, absolutely. My mother, um, I forgave her because I, I was able at a, un- a young age to see that um, people are the way they are for a reason. And yeah, she, she was brought up a specific way. Yeah, she became uh-huh. like her mother. Hmm. Okay, all right. And so you went to her and forgave her for what she did to you? Um, I, I, I didn't have to go to her and forgive her for anything because as a man, I took the responsibility myself. And then you know what I did? I saw my dad. I didn't see her. I saw my dad's absence, my father's absence. Right. So I said, yeah. So within myself, I just said, you know what? My mother did the best she can. I forgive her. I didn't, I didn't go That's to her. Right. And say, Why not? God said that before you enter into the kingdom of heaven, you must go and forgive. Because anyone that yeah. has anger is of the devil because anger is of the devil is evil. And it's of the devil. It's not of God. Okay. And so when you forgive your mother for impose her will, turn you away from your father, God will forgive you. Don't ask for forgiveness. Forgive her, and God will forgive you, and he'll take the spirit of the devil away from you. Because the devil operates in the imagination. Right. Now, I don't have anger. Neither do I have the spirit of the devil. But why not go and and forgive her then? I've already forgiven her. But you didn't tell her. 
Okay. All right. All right. So let me ask you a question. If a person harms you and they die and you can't tell them that you forgive them, are you you held hostage, held hostage by that? No, no because you if you were born in your own if you were born again of the father, you would know that they couldn't help themselves. And so knowing that they can help it because you see you can help yourself, that will cause you to forgive them. But if they're alive, you should go and forgive them, and God will forgive you. He said, forgive, and I will forgive you. Right. right. You got to face your Absolutely. mama. All right. Uh, so what if there's no, now there's no anger towards in me, towards my mom in any shape, form, or fashion. None. So, uh, you know, and I, I really, I really would like, for, like when you re-edit this, you know, I, I really would like for it to be stated that there's no anger towards my mom at all. No, we're not going to take that out. No way. Okay. But all what right. would happen if you went and forgave her for the things she did and you know now that she can help herself? What do you think if you went to her and said, hey, mother, I forgive you for imposing your will on me? And then have you ever asked your father why didn't he protect you from your mother? My, my father passed away. Oh, when you were young? Uh, I no, he passed away when when I was before I had a chance to establish a relationship with him. I was older, but I didn't have a chance to, to establish a relationship with him when he passed away. Oh, amazing! Yeah. Uh, you teach a course on biblical manhood. What is that? Biblical manhood is establishing a definition of what it really means to be a man in this day and age. And what does it mean to be a man? What is a man? Okay, well, by the definition that I give based off of biblically is this. A a biblical man is a man who, through the maturation process, number one, rejects passivity. Number two, accepts responsibility. Number three, leads courageously. And number four, invests eternally. It's everything that Adam didn't do, but, but Jesus did do. Oh, okay. How do you deal with the hell in your wife when it comes out of her? Uh, we, I don't, I don't know that, 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 I don't know that that has happened to us. You know, we've been married for 25 years, but 20, you know, almost 26 years. You have children? Yeah. You know how when she's just mad about nothing and you mm-hmm. all happy and smiling and she's like, what are you smiling for? And she's just angry about nothing. How do you deal with that hell when it comes out of her? I wouldn't know that it's, I would say that it's hell, but when when she gets, uh, <laughs> when we have, I call it heated fellowship. When we have heated, heated fellowship, because we're human beings, we have different uh, opinions <laughs> on things. Uh, we, we're mature now to a point where we just, we have a, an adult discussion. In the past, it would be, it would be, uh, when in, in, our, in our young adult years, it would be some, he the words going back and forth. It was but right hard, now. It was hard to deal with the hell in her when you were younger, when you first married her. Uh, I, I again, I, I don't know about the hell. Uh, uh, it's not uh, heaven. If it's not heaven, it's hell. Oh, it's earthly. <laughs> earthly as hell. Okay. Okay. Uh, Is that right? It's like, well, the Bible says earthly and sensual. That means because of man's wisdom, man's ways. So. You know, her, her, you know, maybe she and I picked up different things about our ideas about life that we tried to impose on each other. But she hate men because she hate her father and she hate her mother who turned her away from her father. And that's why she got the uh, hell in her. She needed to forgive her mama. Because uh, she became just right. like her mama. You know that she's just like her mama? No, 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 she's different. <laughs> she's different. <laughs> <She's different. laughs> um, <laughs> um, I got to ask you this. You said, you because of time here, you said that you died and went to hell. Never said that. You just said you went to hell? I never said I died. No, you didn't die, but you went to hell. Sorry about that. You didn't die, right? You went to hell. Right, right, right. And, and, uh, Tell me, tell us about that. How did you go to hell? December twenty six. Uh, excuse me, February of twenty sixteen. I was uh, I I was dealing with a lot because of my my what I do, betrayal and things like that. I sat up in my bed at nighttime and I thought it felt like I was having a heart attack. It just felt like that. So I'm sitting up 
And whenever those things, you know, something happens to me like that, my go-to is worship. So I started worshiping and that didn't calm it down. I started praying and that didn't calm it down. And I felt myself collapse to my bed and I felt my spirit come out of my body. And uh, to make a long story short, I, 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 I was aware, my senses were aware of everything and I traveled down into the center of the earth. And uh, you want me to tell you the things that I experienced there? Yes, yes. Okay, so uh, it, that, like I, I, you know, I told the story many times since 2016. It makes me emotional every time I tell it. But I, uh, I, I, I felt heat. I didn't see any fire, but I did. I did feel heat. Um, I landed, and like uh, on a on some a rocky surface, and I saw to the left of me a a man that appeared to have had been burnt, like almost like the Freddy Krueger movie. His, his whole body looked like that. He had a chain around his neck. And what was even more worse than that is who was holding the chain. There was a demonic, there was a demon holding the chain. And things things that are there, they don't, they're not said, they're known. It's almost like telepathic. Uh, and I knew that this demon was in this man's life. Like he, he was in his life while he was on the earth with the thought that if I can stay on him and control him long enough, I'll have power over him in this place. So uh, that, that was a horrible thing. And then um, another thing that I saw was it was a, it was a whole space there uh, in that place where music was playing. And um, it was, this, it was uh, the same kind of music that we would hear on the earth, but demons were singing it. Um, and, as I, as I told before, you know, I use an example of like how on the earth you would hear a song, Don't Worry, Be Happy, or you would hear some other song. For, on earth, it would mean like, feel good. It would mean get over a breakup. It would mean get crunk for a party or something. But in hell, the songs that are sang there, every lyric is to torment you. And if, Did you and, say and, that and it torment, sounded like uh, Beyonce and Rihanna? No, I never said that at all. You never that said you never said it sounded like their movie, like their music. No, that was fake news trying to get it propagated oh, okay. story. Yeah, 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 that's what I asked. But go ahead. Yeah, yeah. So, um, it, but it, it, but it sound it was similar to. I just knew that it was similar to like R and B music, and it was it was demonic lyrics, and it, and also to it, I knew, like I said, things are there. They're not said and known. I knew that. People, musicians on the earth, they get they get high and then they get lyrics and they think that it's coming from their soul or something, but it's coming straight from from hell. And it's, it's, it's actually it's one of Satan's ways to put his message out into our, our young people, you know, yeah. and, uh, I've, I've, yeah, so. And so when that was the experience. I'll oh, go ahead. No, finish your point. Um, so I thought that I was, I thought I was there. I thought it was me. You know, that was my eternal destination, even though, you know, the hill is not the final place. The lake of fire is, but I thought that that's what I was going to, I was going to be. And I'm sitting, sitting, I'm thinking like, I, how, how in the world did this happen to me? And, um, as I was thinking that I came out of it and I come back in my, in, in my room, in my body. And I have this experience, uh, I have this experience with uh with with the lord and he told me he said to me that um he said the, he said you have been secretly hoping that i hurt the people that hurt you he said these are not your people these are my people and from now on i only want you to focus on the assignment that i've given you because i want to do something through you that the world hasn't seen and he was he was rebuking me but it was the most love I had ever experienced yeah. in my life. Amazing. You know. And did yeah. you go and forgive those people that had hurt you once you had this experience? Absolutely. I, have, I had a total different viewpoint on every every human being that lives. And I forgave those people as well. And, I, and I, those are some people I did go to and tell them I forgive you. But you haven't gone to your mama yet. Uh, <laughs> that, <laughs> no. no. <laughs> you got to face your mama, man. <laughs> You had to face the devil all over again. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask, uh, when you were in hell, were you standing still or were you moving around in hell? 
or where you stand still and you can see everything just where you were standing, or where you moved about? My my best best recollection of it is everything that I experienced. I was in one spot, kind of like panning around. Uh, the the chains and stuff were to my uh, left, and then to the right, it was a it was a, yeah. I was kind of like in the same space. And when you were there, were you afraid? Um, mm, I was, I was, I was horrified. I was horrified, but more so feeling, feeling abandoned. Like I like, 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 you know, like the person I've been living my life for all these years, uh, had, had abandoned me, but really he was just trying to get a message to me. Meaning God? Yes. And so while you were standing in hell, looking around, you were horrified and you were thinking, that God has abandoned me and I believed in him all these years and now he's abandoned me? That's what it felt like. Yeah. Amazing. Interesting. And did you see the devil? No. You didn't see Satan? No. You just saw his children? I saw, I saw demons for sure. Amazing. Is that the same hell that people on earth are experiencing within themselves? I would say portions of it, absolutely. Portion of, like, like I said in the music, it comes from that place. Yeah. Amazing, huh? And how long were you mm -hmm. down there? Time is different there. You know, on, on Earth, time is used to measure, uh, to measure, you know, for us to, to travel and to know when. There, it is no time. So I can't really... Uh, so in my, in my best my best viewpoint would be about I would say about 15 20 minutes really mm -hmm. and so um so you came back into your body right mm hmm and when you came back into your body you remember that you just came returned from hell oh yeah and how did you handle that once you came back into your body? And you aware of your surrounding? How, how did you deal with all that? Um, there's a there was a level of extreme gratefulness. I mean, the fact that that's not my eternal destination. Yeah. Uh, then that then yeah, and then there was a then there was a, a a space in me of I'm in awe because the Lord is talking to me. Uh, so I, I would say I was extreme gratefulness in awe. But that experience left an imprint on my soul that's still there now. I, you know, so yeah, it changed me. Are you able to describe the 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 impression that it left upon your soul, imprint upon your soul? What is it? Forgiveness. What, forgiveness. Yeah, forgiveness. Yeah, it's like a, a person that can't forgive is a person that's forgotten how much they've been forgiven of. So uh, it just made me look at everybody, no matter what a person has done to me. They'll people will pay consequences on you know because you reap whatever you sow, but I would never wish that a person right. went to that place. Yeah. yeah, amazing. And so, inwardly, do you have perfect peace now? Yeah, uh, perfect peace. Yes. Um, uh, when I choose to trust God in my situation, I do. There are times where I experience uh, emotions that, that that are not peaceful. You know, but um, if, as long as my mind has stayed on him, like the scripture says, right. then I'm in perfect peace. Do you know that? Let me ask, do you create your own thoughts? Uh, do I create my own thoughts? I say, I will say it goes. Yeah, I will say it goes both ways. I will say I create my thoughts, but then it, but then I hear from the Lord from time to time. Well, well, basically the passages I live my life by what the passages say, so I'm thinking, I'm constantly keeping my mind on that. I hope that makes sense. Yeah, and how do you create your own thoughts? Um, my brain, based <laughs> off of my experiences. So, so, so my brain, based off of my experiences, acts in a, in a like a, it's in survival mode. So because that brain is in survival mode, the first thing you're doing is trying to figure out how do I, how do I how I keep myself safe? That's where that's what I think. If you create your own thoughts, why do you create bad thoughts that give you bad feelings? Because we're in this, as Paul said in the scripture, he says that I keep under my body. He said I die daily. So because we're in these 
bodies that has a physical brain, physical new, neurons in our head. It's like something that you, it's almost like speaking another language. You gotta, you gotta hear it in your language first and then speak the way it's supposed to be spoken to that person. So right now, if a bad thought, say for instance, a plane crashes into the house next to me, my survival mode is going to say, whoa, whoa, whoa. But then I'm going to kick in and say, God's got me. Well, those are practical thoughts. Um, is, do you know that Satan made a home in your imagination and he created the thoughts and once you believe the thought, he created the emotions, which sometimes feel good or feel bad, but they're both evil. And that is not you, but it's Satan that made a home and he causes you to think and feel that way. It's of the flesh and not of the of God. I would say that Satan tried to rent space, maybe not made a home, but tried to rent space in my head temporarily. Right, and so if you resist the thoughts, you can resist the devil, and you would never have nothing but perfect peace. Mm, okay. That makes sense? That makes sense, yeah. All yeah. thoughts are all lies all the time about anything. That's why God said, bring all thoughts into captivity, and that his voice is a voiceless voice, and his children should know him by his voice. But most of the people know the devil by his voice, but they call him Jesus. They call who Jesus? The voice in the head. The imagination. God said, bring every imagination to captivity. His voice is a voiceless voice. He revealed to you. He doesn't talk to you. He reveals things, and Satan talked to you. Okay. And then, and so then you have Satan the thoughts and then you have the emotion. He lied to you. He tell you how wonderful you are. Now you feel good. Then he come back and tell you how bad you are. Now you feel bad. And then he tell you good and then he tell you bad because you believe the lie of the voices of the devil. And when you believe the devil, you're worshiping him. Okay. Okay. So you, so you do believe in this, the, like the Holy, the, the Bible, the Holy Bible, right? I believe in God. Okay. Is the Bible right. the word of God or the word from God? I believe that it's the word from God. Absolutely. And where is the word of God? The word of God? Yes. Uh, let me see. The word that is of God is is the same. I, I think they're the same thing. From God and of God. Exact same thing. But, but the Bible is the word from God and the word of God is written in our hearts. Made flesh. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So, what what makes you believe that if you hear a voice that it is it's the devil and not God? When in the Bible, it, all of the prophets heard the voice of. In fact, you you talked about the creation story. In the creation story, it says that Adam heard the voice of the Lord walking in the cool of the day. Right. So, because yeah. when his voice is a voiceless voice, and his children recognize his voice, because before Adam listened to the woman, he and God communicated without words. They communicated with revelation, insight. Mm -hmm. But when, the, okay. when Adam believed the woman and the woman became his God, then they started mm -hmm. using words because Satan speak with words. God speak in, in, in revelation, voiceless. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. That makes sense? Now, yeah, yeah. That, 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 I see where you're coming from in that. I'm just looking through my mind in the Biblical examples of, uh, like Paul on the road to Damascus, when these people were here, like they would hear a voice out loud, or, or Daniel by the Sea of the, uh, I think it's t t the uh, Sea of Terebius, or I, I may be saying that name wrong, but in the book of Daniel, it says that the men around heard the voice, but they saw no one. And this is God giving Daniel the prophecy of the end of the days. And that's what's going to happen with you and everyone once they stop believing the voice of the devil. They hear the voice of the devil that sounds like their voice. It's, it's quoting the scriptures. It's telling them all these different things about the future of the past. So they hear the voice of the devil. But when you stop listening to that, overcome it, then you hear the voice of God. You won't see a physical God around you, but you would know his voice. I, I think I think in some cases people do hear from the devil. All that people that God. listen to the devil, listen to the voices of the imagination, are listening to the devil. They even pray to the devil. Right, right. So, so 
then we have to understand what is imagination and what is spirit. Like the Bible says, call upon me, I'll answer you and show you right. mighty things to come. You know, so what is the imagination and the, what is spirit? The imagination is the mind of the devil. He lives in your mind and he is the mind of the devil. I mean, he is the nature of the devil. And then uh, that's why people who have anger, they listen to the devil. They worship him. They love him. They call him Jesus. But once you forgive and God forgive you, he take the spirit of the devil away from your heart. Then you start hearing his voice. And then the spirit of the God of God will destroy the imagination, which is of the devil, which is the ego that made a home in the flesh. Okay. All right. So these things that you're saying now, they're not coming from the Bible. You know, they um, are in the Bible. They, okay. and they're all over the, the New Testament. He has mm -hmm. given us a new kingdom, a new reality, word made flesh, and we are of the spirit. We are no longer of the other thing, the physical. Mm -hmm. Amazing, huh? Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> I got to ask this. I want to talk to you about, have you noticed that white men are the most hated species on this side of heaven? No. You haven't noticed how, I mean, they have, they're calling the white man superior. Uh, uh, they they want to teach race theory and all this crap, and they're, they're taking his jobs away from him and giving them to people who don't earn them or deserve them. They are trying to run the white man out of his own country. You haven't noticed that? They call uh, him a racist, white supremacy, and all that. Have you noticed that? Um, to say your your question was the the most hated, you know, uh, group on this side Earth. of heaven. Yes, on this side of heaven, uh, that the white man is that. I, you know, I haven't noticed that. Why not? Uh, because when I see hey, I see that happening in our country. I see that African American people see it that way. And we're definitely not the my, my majority. So how could how could we be? How could they be the most hated if it's us that's hating them? You, you see, see what that I'm it's so much. You see that the black mm -hmm. people hate the white people, right? For the most part, some do. Right, and um, but there are other people who are using the blacks in their fallen state of anger to go after white men because men, all men represent God. They're sons of God, even though they've been turned away in many cases. They're still sons of God. And white men tend to be Christian men, and so they hate him because he's a man and the image of God, and they hate him because he's a Christian. And you get the man out of the way, then the woman will step in and destroy everything because the hell come through her. And so the white man is in the way. Okay. All right. So I, I had I don't see that they're the most hated, but I know that they are hated. And why are they hated? Well, um, the colonization of people to you know what what people would believe to be taking somebody else's land, uh, what people would believe to be now from my perspective, I deal with all cultures. They all I have people that call me pastor that are white men, you know. So I and then I have people in the same church that are African American that see that, that believe that they get white privilege, you know? So um, I believe that the belief that they're colonizers, number one, and the belief that white people think that they are superior, uh, this is what makes people hate them. And so do you correct the congregation for thinking that way? Some that, the ones that do, not everybody think that, I said some do. So, so the some that do, absolutely, I correct them from that. It, especially if that person um, has not demonstrated those things. Um, let me ask real fast. So your wife is a preacher and you have children, right? Yeah. Uh, how many children you have? Three. Are they, li are they young kids? They, no, no. They're all they're adults all, now? All... Mm -hmm. Did you make your wife stay home or, and watch over them when they were little? I didn't make her, but she did. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> Amazing. She, she 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 rose all up. She she raised all of them oh, at yeah. home. And how are they doing now? Mm -hmm. Well, all of them are emotionally well balanced in life. 
Um, and I, and it was partially because of that, because mom was present and gave the nurturing. Right on. And you corrected her whenever she imposed a will on them? You protected uh, the children from her? Uh, whenever she imposed her will on them. Yes. Um, I, I, I don't know that I saw that. I saw her nurturing and I saw her it, uh, carrying out my mission for the family. So she would ask you, she would tell you and you would tell her what to do? She would, there are certain things that she knows of me from living with me for all, you know, all the years that she had. Right. She knows, she knows that I would tolerate. Nice. Uh, then there's things that she knows that God would do. Yeah. What's the solution to the division in America today? What is the solution to bring back America? I believe America is so, uh, separate from a social, uh, from a, from, from a moral crisis. And I think that if America could turn to the Lord, could turn to God, and and I serve God in the name of Jesus Christ, right, uh, and follow the pattern of morality through the Bible, I think that right there will solve one hundred percent. Yeah. Well, let, let, let me be more realistic. Maybe ninety five percent of all the problems in America. Uh, one last question about that. Then I have to put you on the hot seat. Um, okay. Um. They are putting women in position in government, city councils, police departments, schools, homes, and everywhere. If they continue to allow these women to get into these positions of leadership, is it possible to bring the country back to normal when you have the devil, the daughters of the devil leading the country? Um. We need to have men in leadership. We need to have men, much more men in leadership. Yeah. I don't think that women, yeah, I don't think that women can be in leadership, but I, I think we need to have, you know, men there. Yeah, I agree. Amazing. So I got to heat this thing up. I got to put you on the hot seat. And okay. I, I need you to answer these questions as quickly as possible. Okay. The hot seat. Was Jesus white? No. Um, a Bible thumpers alpha or betas? Uh, betas. <laughs> Does a chicken have lips? No. Is the earth flat or round? Round. Have you ever gone to hell in a handbasket? No. <laughs> I had planned to ask, when you had that hell experience, did you ever go back again or that only happened that one time? Only that one time. Oh, okay. Uh, should blacks get reparations? Um, mm. <laughs> if they, I, I would say if they can, yeah. <laughs> Do we need more white babies? <laughs> yeah, as many as the world as the world can handle. <laughs> Do you tremble at the idea that whites will become minority in in the USA? No. Do real men make boys first? Do they make boys first? Do real men make boys first? I don't understand the question. Um, do do real men, men when first? real men get married, make babies, do they make boys first? Oh, oh, I don't necessarily agree with that, no. When your first child, a boy or girl? Girl. Boo! <laughs> <laughs> no wonder. My first child is a son. Ooh. Mm. Um, okay. right. Is it better for kids to be raised by a single mother or a single father? Uh, single mother. Did Big Mama Michelle Obama eat, eat up all the ribs? I don't think so. <laughs> uh, will you vote for the Great White Hope this time around? I keep that personal. Nice. Should we shut down the borders and send all the illegal aliens back home or back where they came from? I, uh, whew, that's a tough one. I'm not, I'm not for illegal, I'm not for illegal uh, aliens. Nice. Uh, which is worse? Which was worse for the black people, the civil rights movement or abortion? Abortion. Is police brutality a real issue? Not as real as they make it. What is a man? 
a man who through the maturation process accepts responsibility, rejects passivity, accepts responsibility, uh, uh, leads, et uh, invests eternally, and leads courageously. What is love? Love is the opposite of hate. Hate is the one harm to come to someone. Love is to make sacrifices. Love is to uh, uh, make sacrifices for someone uh, to the point where you, you put their needs in front of yours. Is a man that a man that has anger is he a beta or an alpha male? He's a I would say he's a beta. <laughs> Did you have fun? I have fun. I have fun. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on, man. I totally appreciate it. Tell the folks how to get to your ministry, your website, whatever information you want to put out there. You can follow me uh, on TikTok, where everyone's following me at uh, Gerald. A. Johnson 1, or you can go to my uh, Instagram page, Gerald A. Johnson, or my website, GeraldAJohnson.org. Amazing. Thank you for coming on. And folks, don't forget that the Fall Estate is now on Locals.com, so click the link in the description and, uh, um, and support our work. Thank you for becoming members of the Fall Estate by joining our membership channel there on YouTube. I appreciate it. Thank you all for tuning in. Let me hear from you. And Pastor Gerald Johnson, thank you for coming on, man. That was fun. Thanks for having me. All right. Take care now. Okay. Amazing. Amazing.